Hello and welcome. So in this video, I want to briefly cover how you're interacting with the Binance API using Python. Additionally, I will go over a KuCoin API request to show you that the logic remains the same for every other crypto exchange having an API. So basically, you need two things. An API documentation to see which endpoints you need to use to request data and the requests library to make use of these endpoints. Okay, so first of all, we need a base URL. You will find that in the documentation. The base endpoint is, so we are just copy pasting that and define that as a string. Then we need the path and the path is just the endpoint or the data you are interested in. So let's start with an easy one. We are just pulling the exchange information, information like which symbols are traded on the Binance platform. So you need to browse through the documentation. Of course, you could also search it but I know roughly where it is. So here it is. So this is what we need. This get is the HTTP method we have to use and this is the path we have to use. So we are copy pasting just this and remember we need to use the get method. So our path is that and now we are requesting that data. Therefore we are defining our use requests, then the HTTP method get and provide our base URL plus the path. And with that, we are getting a response 200, which is a positive response. If you're getting a 400, that is a response error. Okay, so we received data. Now let's make it visible. A possibility would be to use text on the request object. But as you see, the data is not structured. It is not lucid. So a better way would be to use the JSON method here. And then you will see that we are getting the data in a JSON formatted fashion. So we are getting a lot of information here. So we're getting all symbols and some additional information. The content of this is not part of this video, but I've covered that in other videos as well. Now this was the easiest possible request. Now let's move on to a request where we have to pass parameters. So let's get rid of all this stuff here. We can keep that, but now we are amending the path because we are interested in another endpoint. So let's search for our K lines. And as you see here, we see the, the endpoint of K line data and also the HTTP method we have to use. So we can already copy paste that here. And this is important now, this is the parameters we have to provide and we can provide. So we have two mandatory parameters, symbol and interval, and we have three optional parameters. All right, so symbol and interval we need. Let's go back and amend the path to the new endpoint we're interested in, which is K lines. And now we have to provide these parameters and I'm defining them here and use the first way to provide parameters, which is just define them in a string. We will come to the second way in some seconds. So we have to use a question mark here, then provide the parameter. So symbol is the first one and we are just interested in the Bitcoin USDT uh, Kline data. Then we separate the next parameter by using an end symbol here and then provide interval and define that as one minute. So in case you're asking yourself, how can I know that this is one M and not one min? This is also part of the documentation. So you see here that you have the intervals. So as you see, a lot of reading uh, it is actually. But anyhow, we have the parameters and now we can just use this here. So let me just pull that down here and then add the parameters to this um, yeah, URL here. And if we are executing that, we are getting a positive response. And if I'm calling the JSON function again, you will see that we are getting candlestick data. So I have videos on how to yeah, proceed or how to make this data readable on my channel I will link that in the video description in case you're interested in that. But anyhow, the other way to pass parameters, I will cover now. So instead of 
this string here. We can just get rid of that and pass the parameters as an argument to this function and provide the parameters uh, in a dictionary. So first one was symbol and then we want to pass the Bitcoin. Second one was interval, interval, and we are passing 1m here. So if we are executing that, we're getting a positive response and we are getting the same output here. So two possible ways to pass parameters. Okay, so to show you that this is basically applicable to any other cryptocurrency API, we are pulling over the KuCoin documentation here and we're just doing it all again for KuCoin. So let's get rid of everything and start from scratch again. So first base URL, we need to search for that here, base URL. We have this one. Then we are again pulling historical K-line data. Histories, we have get and then histories and we have a symbol parameter which is required. So again, you could use the URL approach as they're doing here, using a question mark and then providing the parameters, or you can provide the parameters as a dictionary. So let's do it like this, provide the path here, then use requests, get, provide the base URL again, plus the path, and then provide the parameters in a dictionary format. So symbol should be BTC. USCT. And that is resulting in a positive response here. And we are getting K-Line data from KuCoin. All right. Okay, so last but not least, let's place a trade using the Binance API. There are quite some things to consider here. So you have to provide a header containing your API key. In case you're wondering, how do I get my API key and my API secret? I've covered that in another video, which I will link in the description. Secondly, you need to provide a SHA-256 signature. And third, you also need to provide a timestamp. Do I know how to code all of that? No, I don't, but another very smart human being has already done that for us. So all credits to code.luasoftware.com. The following stuff is not my work. I'm just showing you that this is actually working. So we are just copy pasting his whole work here. And we also need the libraries he was importing. And yeah, that's basically it. So here you see I've run another notebook, which is just containing my API key and my API secret. So the variables are lowercase, I'm just reassigning them here. This is the base URL, same as we did in the very beginning. This is the header we have to provide and we are providing the API key as I just said. So let's execute that. And this is the path. So where's the documentation? So this is just this path here. Somewhere has to be the new order here. Here's the path and you see that we need this signature to use that. And now we have to use post instead of get because we are not getting data anymore, but we are actually providing something to the server, which is our order. Okay, so this is the timestamp. So this is just pulling the time as of now as a Unix timestamp and there are some more transformation to actually get the timestamp as of now. Let's do some amendments here. So I just want to buy Cardano with the market order. We don't need all that kind of stuff here. Quantity we need, let's just buy 10 here and that should be fine. So 
This part here is doing the encryption. As said, I'm not an encryption specialist, so I don't actually know what exactly this is doing, but this is doing the SHA-256 encryption. And as you see here, now we're using the POST method, and with that, we should be able to execute a trade. So let's take a look at that. You see successful response here. So let's take a look at the output. So you see I bought Cardano uh, for a price of 1.168. And yeah, that's already it. So of course I will link the luasoftware.com in the video description. And yeah, again, all credits to him for that part. And anyhow, I hope this video was helpful or at least informative. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. So I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. Bye bye.